were 4G and everybody was saying we have to get 4G. And then they said, before that, we have to get 3G. And now we have to get 5G, and 5G is a big deal. And that's going to be there for a while. And I guess uh, at some point we'll be talking to you about number six. What do you think? Do you think that's true, Asia? <laughs> but right now we want to be the leader in this. We're the leader in almost everything else. And we're grateful to be joined by FCC Chairman Ajit Pai, who's been doing a fantastic job, and Deputy Secretary of Agriculture Stephen Sensky. Thank you very much, Stephen. Appreciate it. And tell Sonny hello. He's doing a tremendous job, really tremendous. Secure 5G networks will absolutely be a vital link to America's prosperity and national security in the 21st century. 5G will be as much as 100 times faster than the current 4G cellular networks. It will transform the way our citizens work, learn, communicate, and travel. It will make American farms more productive, American manufacturing more competitive, and American health care better and more accessible. Basically, it covers almost everything when you get right down to it. Pretty amazing. And just as 4G networks paved the way for smartphones and all of the exciting breakthroughs, they made possible so many things. This will be more secure and resilient. 5G networks will also create astonishing and really thrilling new opportunities for our people, opportunities that we've never even thought we had a possibility of looking at. We cannot allow any other country to outcompete the United States in this powerful industry of the future. We are leading by so much in so many different industries of that type, and we just can't let that happen. The race to 5G is a race America must win, and it's a race, frankly, that our great companies are now involved in. We've given them the incentive they need. It's a race that we will win. In the United States, our approach is private sector-driven and private sector-led. The government doesn't have to spend lots of money. According to some estimates, the wireless industry plans to invest $275 billion in 5G networks, creating 3 million American jobs freeing quickly, up as much wireless quickly. spectrum and as needed. We're going to free it up to our so they'll be able to get out there and get it done and removing regulatory barriers to the build out of networks. As Chairman Pai will discuss with you in a moment, the FCC is taking very bold action, probably bolder than they've ever taken before. It's a new frontier to make wireless spectrum available. By next year, the United States is on pace to have more 5G spectrum than any other country in the world. That's a big statement because, as you know, some people got ahead of us. We should have been doing this a long time ago, as advanced as it may be. In addition, last October, I directed the Department of Commerce to develop a national spectrum strategy to free up even more spectrum for economic activity, including 5G. The FCC has also taken action to streamline the permitting process for 5G infrastructure with state and local governments. That's a big deal. Uh, it takes too long to get permits. We're going to free that situation up, and we're going to put limits, and uh, the local areas are going to listen to us very, very strongly. They have a big incentive to do that. They must now approve new physical infrastructure within 90 days instead of many years. It can sometimes take three, four, and five years. Uh, we're going to put a limit of 90 days. And there is now a cap on the unreasonable fees local governments often charge. They get greedy. They think, hey, we can really take advantage, and it ends up that everybody gets hurt. So we're putting a cap on those fees. These changes will contribute greatly to building high-speed networks across America, and it's going to happen very quickly, very, very quickly. By the end of this year, the United States will have 92 5G deployments in markets nationwide. The next nearest country, South Korea, will have 48. So we have 92 compared to 48, and we're going to accelerate that pace greatly. But we must not rest. The race is far from over. American companies must lead the world in cellular technology. 5G networks must be secure. They must be strong. They have to be guarded from the enemy. We do have enemies out there, and they will be. They must also cover every community, and they must be deployed as soon as possible. 
As we are making great progress with 5G, we're also focused on rural communities that do not have access to broadband at all. And we have a couple of people from the great farms that I love, that I'm sure voted for me. I won't ask them, but they seemed <laughs> I think they, for the most part, yes, good. I think, I think for the most part, they did. I think, uh, I know that almost automatically. I'd be very surprised. But I have to say, I've been talking about broadband uh, for the, for rural America. The farmers and others, uh, they have really been, uh, they just haven't been treated properly. And now what we're doing is we're making it a priority. That's the areas we want to go to first, so they're covered. We're also working closely with federal agencies to get networks built in rural America faster and at much, much lower cost than it is even today. So now I'd like to introduce a very special man who's really worked hard and gained the respect of the world, truly, because they see what we're doing in our country, who will be making two major announcements to accelerate our 5G future and extend broadband access to every American no matter where you are, you will have access very quickly to 5G, and it's going to be a different life. I don't know that it's going to be better. Maybe you're happy the way it is right now. <laughs> but I can say, technologically, it won't even be close. So, Chairman Pai, thank you very much. Please, say a few words. Thank you very much. Thank you.